And hello YouTube, this is GS Man Smart, and I'm going to on a brand new video for Gaming with GS, and today we're on Guild Wars 2, and we're going to talk a little bit about the new additions that they added to the game on the most recent patch. If you are not aware, if you're a new Guild Wars 2 player, well then, uh, just for your information, Guild Wars 2 is now 4 years old. Uh, they just released a 4 year anniversary video on their YouTube channel. Uh, you should definitely check it out, so it's really interesting. What some of the developers uh, say about launch day when they first launched Guild Wars 2. It's really, it's, it's, it's a neat little watch. It's not very long. I'll leave the link in the description below for you to enjoy it. Uh, lots of gem store sales have also been going on. I haven't really covered any of that stuff because I really don't like covering gem store stuff. I know a lot of people don't like hearing about it either. So I thought there's no point to make a video. Um, some new things have gone into the game, such as Basket Brawl, which is basically basketball. I do have some footage to talk a little bit about it in a second. We also have a new current event, the Tremor current event, which a lot of people seem to uh, be a little confused about. Hopefully I'll clear some stuff up today about that current event. I was confused about it as well. In fact, I was going to release this video on the day on the patch or a day after the patch, but even I was confused of how to do the current event. So, um... Yeah, I just figured out today uh, what's going to be happening. A lot of people figured out yesterday how this event works, so I thought I'd share uh, the information that we all got. As you see, we have now green commander tags. As you see, it's, it's, it's so cool. I've always wanted them to have a green commander tag and an orange commander tag. Uh, a lot of people wanted to create their own colored tags, and that's always been popular. But now we have an extra two commander tags, as you can see. Before, we only had red, uh, purple blue and yellow now we have green and orange that's really cool because i've seen several times where you have these big map events such as in dragon stand or such as in arc basin or even in world versus world you have several different commanders and even if you have four commanders sometimes you need an extra color well now we have six different colors and it's really cool i really like the green one that's why i had it on the start of the video i really thought that one was cool World vs. World also had an update. Uh, now, Desert Borderlands and Alpine Borderlands are going to be together. The way it's going to work is that I think Red red Side will have the Desert Borderlands. As you see, Red always has Desert. And then Blue and Green always have the Alpine. And then obviously we have the Eternal Battleground. So it's neat that they actually added uh, both of them. So for people who like Desert, they can play in Desert. People who like Alpine, they can play in Alpine. Obviously, a lot of people like Alpine more. So we have Green and Blue there. It's neat that they added that, though. We also have a lot of new uh, gem store, uh, not gem store, we have a new black line weapon set, which I really, really like. I really like this uh, new weapon set that we got uh, in the black line uh, company there. As always, it will cost you one black line ticket, and uh, are we going the wrong, yeah, we're going the wrong way. One black line ticket, uh, I did give away one uh, black line weapon, which is worth over 100 gold. A ticket is worth over 100 gold. And some of these weapons sell for over 100 gold. So certain some of our giveaways we do give away things like this. But if you see if you happen to have Black Lion tickets, uh, definitely invest in these weapons because they're really nice. I really like the shield. I really like the staff. Uh, here's the staff. Looks really nice. I would get it, but um, you know I'd rather keep it for you guys for our next giveaway. So pretty cool. Um, and apart from that. We also got the new current event, which I just mentioned, which I'll go over in just a second. But let me go over Basket Brawl first. So Basket Brawl is this new activity that they added. And it's, it's pretty fun, I gotta tell you. I, I was playing a good four or five games in a row. It was, it's, it's kind of addicting uh, because, you know, it's, it's like basketball. Here's the guy. So you go in Lion's Arch, talk to this guy right here, and he tells you, oh, uh, Basket Brawl, see? And you can... Pre compressed the check mark, so let's go. I have some footage in the background right now of uh, the basketball gameplay. But like I was saying, it's a fun game. I like the mechanics behind it. I like that you can play very well defense. Uh, offense, uh, I don't know. It, it, this part, this activity could have some work to it. Um, it's kind of hard to see who has the ball. It's kind of hard to uh, make passes correctly. I made about two passes and... Uh, they messed, uh, the person I passed to one time messed up. The other time, the pass wasn't even complete for some reason. And um, so I feel like offensively, it's it's not encouraging teamwork enough. I see a lot of people picking up the ball and just running and trying to score a goal. Trying to, trying to score a basket for themselves, not really passing. 
And that, that could be because no one knows who has the ball. Uh, it's very hard to tell who has the ball. And they, there needs to be a marker, I think. If there was a marker somewhere, I think it'd be a lot easier. Because half the time, people are running around not knowing what they're doing. Uh, also, if, if it's the first time you're playing the game, you don't know what the buttons do. And quite frankly, when the game's going on, and if you're on offense, if you have the ball, you have new buttons that do different things. And you're not going to have time to read your descriptions of the buttons while you have the ball, because someone's going to steal the ball from you. So I feel like there should be a the, sh the buttons should be explained in the instructions. They do give instructions on how to play the game, but the buttons aren't explained. Your uh, your abilities are not explained. I think that should uh, be included because several times I had to stop and read, and I got the ball stolen from me because I didn't know the abilities. Uh, you could probably look up on the wiki. You type in basketball. I think the wiki is already up to date with the abilities, so I, th I guess you could do that too. But overall, the game's really fun. The activity is really fun. Uh, this is definitely something, you know, a lot of times you see the activity participator in the dailies. I, let's be honest, no one really does that. I mean, I don't do it. A lot of people I know don't do it either. They'd rather do something else than the daily activity. A lot of times it's because people just don't know how to play the activity. Um, but I encourage you to check these activities out. Some of these activities are really fun. Basketball just came in. It's it says it's gonna be here for a week. I don't know if it's gonna. I don't know if they're gonna be taking it out and like you know looking at it and making it better and then bringing it back. I'm not gonna bring it back, but I like it. I really like it. I encourage you to play it. It's fun. I do think it's it's lacking a bit of communication. It's lacking a bit of organization. I feel like uh, it's some people play it as a one one man team game, a one man game, and not as a team game. But you know, I guess that can be said about every activity sort of too. But so far, I like it. You know, make a marker so people see who has the ball. Uh, make passing a little easier, I guess. Maybe I haven't played enough games. I know some people who play this game. Uh, I saw I had one guy in my team that played it like seven, eight games in a row. He looked like he knew what he was doing. He had like 50 points or something like that. And shooting the ball and dunking is really cool. I really like it. You know, you have to jump and then shoot the ball. And sometimes you can dunk. Sometimes you can get a three-pointer, a two-pointer. The shooting mechanics are really well done. A defense is really well done too, but I feel like again one of the problems is if the person If it says home ball or away ball and a person has to pick the ball up uh, from outside from out of bounds uh, You have to pick the ball up after someone makes a score or goes out of bounds You have to pick the ball up I feel like it's also very unfair because people can just go up to you and as you pick the ball up They can steal the ball from you. So uh, I feel like there there has to be like some type of you know boundary You can't just go right in front of some you can't just go right in front of someone's face and you know as soon as they pick up the ball, you can steal it. I don't think that's how it should be. So that I think that should be addressed too. But overall, great activity. If you haven't checked it out yet, go ahead and check it out. I think you'll like it a lot. It can take some time to get used to, but overall, I think it's really fun. Now for the Tremor current event, uh, they added a new current event, as they do with every uh, new update. It seems like if there's no big update, then they're going to be adding current events, which I'm fine with. I like that. It's something to do every two weeks and it gives us a new goal. Now there are two new achievements for the Tremor current event. If you go into your general and you go into current events, you'll see that we now have something called, well after you unlock it, which I'll explain in just a second, the transfer chaser. Once you've completed an achievement, another achievement unlocks, which is the uh, weapon collection for the destroyer weapon collection as you see the re the reward for this is the uh the primordis yeah, the primordis weapons and you have to collect the destroyer weapons so once you complete this achievement the second achievement comes available which is the primordis weapon set and uh, you can complete those by like, getting a ton of lodestones i hear a lot of people saying they're not going to do it because it takes so many lodestones to do it and uh, quite frankly, the reward you get for completing, for, for uh, gathering all the weapons in the Primordial's weapon set is an Ascended Staff. So if you don't use a staff, then I guess it's not really worth it. You can salvage it though, so um, you know, salvaging it wouldn't be a bad idea. You could get some uh, Ascended Mats that you could sell or use for your own crafting. In fact, uh, you do need a total of 450 Destroyer Lodestones to craft all the weapons. And if we take a look at the price of load, uh, the lodestones, lodestones in general are just really expensive. Uh, and destroyer lodestones are probably more expensive now because this has been released. Uh, oh look, I got I got 10 gold from the last gold trick that I got. I haven't picked it up yet. But destroyer lodestones are probably a lot more expensive now because this was just released. 
As you see, Destroyer Lodestone is sitting at almost one gold now. Uh, a lot of Lodestones are pretty expensive, though, so... They've always been expensive. But you need 450 of these, so if you have 450 gold to throw into this collection for an Ascendant Staff, then I guess go ahead. But those are the two achievements that we have. Now, the way you unlock the first achievement, which is the, which is the Transfer Chaser, is you have to go into one of the current maps. Now, there are five current maps. If we take a look back in the achievement real quick, you'll see that... Snowden Drifts, I, this is the one I completed yesterday, but if we scroll down, as you can see, there are five There are five locations. The first location was in Frostgorge Sound, which I did not complete because I was really confused of how the event worked. Uh, second location is Snowden Drifts. The third, fourth, and fifth location, we will find out as you complete the location. The next location is supposed to be Lorner's Pass. Now... What I mean by active map, each of these, every five days or so, a new active map will become available. For, for today, the active map is Snowden Drifts. In fact, uh, according to speculation, people are saying that until September 1st, that is when Snowden Drifts will become inactive and Lorner's Pass will become the active map. So, between August 23rd and 27th, the active map was Snowden, the active map was, was Frostgorge Sound. So, if you went into Frostgorge Sound, and you found the NPC, you can do the current event for that map. Yesterday, I completed Snowden Drifts, because the active map uh, for these five days, August 27th to September 1st, was Snowden Drifts. So, I did that. So, if you're, if you're confused right now, if you're confused, well, why can't I do, finish the rest? It's because they rotate on a five-day basis. That's what speculation is right now. Uh, every five days, the map switches. So... On September 1st to September to September 6th, we'll probably get the next map, which is Lorna's Pass. Then another five days, we'll get the fourth map. Another five days, we'll get the next map. So yes, to complete this achievement, you pretty much need 25 days uh, max to actually get this done. Which I guess is kind of weird because they're basically time getting a current event. And, you know, it's a current event. You're supposed to allow players to complete the current event. And right now, we're being time gated. It's, it's just kind of It's just kind of silly. I don't know why they did that. They should have just... You know, done on a on a daily on a daily basis could have been good too. You know, but every five days seems a bit too much. I mean, a lot of people have been, have complained about that that it's time gated by five days, and it seems it seems too harsh and seems too long of a wait. I kind of agree with that. I, I, I it should have been one day. It should have been a few hours maybe. Um, you know, five days seems a bit too much though. Um, or it could have been all at once. It could have just been all all maps could have been active and it could have been different NPCs and you could have done it. But who knows why I did it. They have a reason for it. I don't know what the reason is, but that's how it is. That's how it's going to work. So, for those of you who are confused about that, glad we cleared it up. Now, for those of you who haven't even started this, find your active map. Uh, if you look around, ask someone in map chat. Uh, if you're watching this in the future, I'm not going to know. On the wiki, they might have it. If you if you type in uh, Tremor current event, probably. Right now, we're speculating that's every five days. Currently, upload date. Snowden Drifts is the current map. So, um, if you're watching this a week from now, it's probably going to be Lorna's Pass. You go to the active map, and you have to find the NPC called Sace Bernhardt. Now, when you find Sace Bernhardt, uh, like I said, in the active map, it's in different locations. If you are looking for the one in Snowden Drifts, then Sace Bernhardt is in the northeast corner of Snowden Drifts. And you can basically talk to talk to the person, and they'll give you a sensor. The sensor is not an item. It's basically an active action key that is available for 30 minutes. You have 30 minutes from the time you talk to the NPC. You have 30 minutes from that point on to find the five sensors. Now, what you're basically looking for are little yellowish, greenish, bright, bright yellow, greenish uh, clouds of smoke on the floor. You walk up to them, you interact with them, you need to find five of them. Now, why do you have this sensor? The sensor tracker that you got, the sensor tracker, which is what Sace Bernhardt gave you, is an action key. You press the action key above your five skill, you'll see symbols appear on the floor on your screen. If it's a green symbol, then you are very close to one of the sensors. If it's a blue symbol, it'll tell you what direction to go, and you're somewhat nearby. 
If it's a red symbol, you're pretty far away and you may as well waypoint to another location to see if you get any closer. Now, these are now these little symbols that you see when you press the action key, that's on a 10 second cooldown, so every 10 seconds you can press the action key again and you'll see the symbols again. These symbols are relative to the position that they're in. So if you see a symbol on the right, you have to walk right. If you see a symbol in front of you, you walk in front of you. If you see a symbol on the left, you walk to the left. So move your camera around, look for the symbol, and just walk in that direction. And when, if you see a green symbol, you're near. Look on the floor, look for look for a cloud of look for a cloud of magic, cloud of dust. And uh, you should see footage in the back right now of me finding things and how the sensor tracker works to find the sensors. Once you find all five sensors. Then you'll get the achievement point for that map. And you'll get achievement points, and you'll get progress made in the Transfer Chaser achievement. Now, each map has its own achievement. So, if you complete all five maps, you get five achievements. If you complete all five maps together, you also get the extra achievement for completing all five maps. So, while each map has its own achievement, completing all of them also gives you another achievement. And once you complete all five maps, you can start the... Uh, Prim Primordus Weapon Collection achievement as well to unlock the Ascended Staff. So that's kind of how it works. It is time gated. It's pretty fun. I re I enjoyed it. You know these little scavenger hunt things I like, especially if you're given like a little tracker to you know walk around the world. In some of these maps, you may not even have map completion done. So this encourages you to do map completion. You might go into an area you haven't even explored yet. So that's pretty cool. But overall, a pretty neat current event. The only downside is that it's time-gated, and I, I don't think they should have done that. I hate time-gated stuff, to be quite frank with you. Uh, I know a lot of people do. But uh, overall, pretty fun little event, and hopefully people are enjoying it and can look past the time-gated uh, portion. Or maybe, maybe they'll change it. They have been looking at uh, Reddit and the forums for feedback, so perhaps they'll change it to three days or two days. Who knows? But yeah, uh, if you want to see what the next map is, if you go back to Sace Bernhardt after you collected all the sensors, they'll basically tell you in what map is next. So if you find Sa if you find Sace Bernhardt in the current map, you'll always know what the next map is because after you found the sensors, go back, talk to the NPC, and they'll tell you what map they're going to be in next, which is most likely going to be when the reset is in the five uh, five days time window. That's how the current event works, and apart from that, there wasn't really else in the patch. There wasn't really else anything I wanted to go over either. Uh, Guild Wars 2 has been somewhat slow, especially if you already completed Outer Shadows and you completed the achievements already. Then you're probably just sitting here doing current events or uh, farming some farming some stuff for gold. Uh, I'm still sitting on a lot of gold, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you found it very helpful and hopefully you found it informative. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Lots of the Guild Wars 2 content, Guild Wars 2 guides, Guild Wars 2 gold tricks. Lots of cool stuff. Lots of their gaming content uh, in general coming as well. And, and if you've been curious why the uh, videos have been down in production uh, for the last week or two, it's because I have been busy with school. My school has started. I'm trying to find a balance in video making and schooling. And uh, my girlfriend also has moved in with me. In fact, she's right now in the shower. So, if you want, if you want to see our vlog that we created, go ahead and click the link on screen right now, or the card on screen if you want. If you're interested in that type of stuff, you're interested in, you know, that type of vlog, because it is pretty life changing, and that's also been something that's been, you know, keeping me preoccupied and you know having to figure other stuff out. So that's why video production has been a bit low. A lot of stuff going on in my life right now. And hopefully you guys can understand that. Hopefully the videos that I am producing still entertain you and you still find them helpful. And yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Uh, more gaming content, more general gameplay is going to be coming to our channel as well. Maybe it won't be only Guild Wars 2 because I want I do want to do some videos with her. I think really fun. I might do, a, might do The Sims, The Sims 4. Uh, I think that'll be really fun. You, know, I've never played a Sims game. I have played a Sims game, but I've never like fully gotten into it. And uh, I, I really want to try it with her. So we might have that Let's Play on the channel. Uh, I'm not sure yet, but we might have different games on, on the channel as well other than Guild Wars 2. So if you're new to the channel and you're interested in that, then uh, go and subscribe as well. Otherwise, subscribe for the Guild Wars 2 content because plenty more is coming as well. You can also donate a dollar to my Patreon page. Anything as low as that is very helpful and much appreciated. All you gotta do is click the card in the top right hand corner of the screen and it'll bring you to the page. I also have my vlogging channel, music channel, tutorials channel, and advice channel. If you wanna check those out, links in the description as well as on the end card. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching as always, guys. I'll see you guys next time. This is GS Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere. Thank you.